Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful Sunday morning that our Heavenly Father has made for us to come together as a congregation and praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. The announcements as are in the bulletin are the announcements and concerns from the congregation at this time. Karen. It's great to see that Christmas box filling up with shoe boxes. And I know today it's the last day, but what we're going to do is move that box down into my classroom. So if you're still filling your shoe boxes, um, we could still fill them for the next couple weeks. Just put them down in my, um, in my Sunday school room. Just pile them on there. So it's good to see all of them. Thank you. Thank you for your giving hearts. Anyone else? Pastor? Thank you, brother. Good morning. We have several requests. Megan Sutherland, you probably remember Tyson, Susie's son, and, and uh, she apparently had a very serious fall and broke her ankle in ways that need to be pre repaired with plates and pins, and that gives you some kind of an idea of how serious that is. So let's keep Susie in our prayers, as well as uh, uh, Megan and Tyson. Are there any other prayer requests? We have the joy of having with us today, Janelle. It's amazing. Last week she was in a, in a fight, in a knife fight, and Today, here she is with her faithful husband. I hope I didn't bite off more than I can chew on that issue. Any other prayer requests? Keep Mary Ann McAllister in your prayers. I hope to see her this week. And also, we're glad that Jim and Peggy are here. Not that we're not usually glad, even when they're not here, but it's always nice to see the people that are so faithful and so supportive. Pat Morrill, I don't think she is here today, but she needs our prayers. She's home and doing well, but uh, she had some, also some serious knife fights with the doctor. We're glad that uh, we have John and Linda here and we could go all the way through uh, and identify all the people that we are so glad that they're doing well and, and uh, enjoying God's life. Any other requests? If there are no other requests, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we admit that we cannot keep up with your word and that we refuse so often to listen to you and to tell us what it is that you would have us do. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your goodness and for your mercy, for your gift of faith. And we ask that you continue to be with each of the persons that we mentioned in our earlier uh, uh, announcement, questions about announcements. And we ask that you will continue to bless each one of us in a way that is unmistakable and also so important for each one of us. As I was praying, I remembered other people who need your prayers for healing and Carrie came to mind and we are glad that she is here and we hope that she continues to make progress so that she can be up and about and give her sister uh, some trouble. Thank you, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful name. Amen. Please rise.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. Let us together pray the prayer of the day, which is found in the insert to your bulletin. Care for your church, O Lord, with perpetual mercy, since we totter and sure to fall without your grace. Remove what will harm us and arrange what will make us whole. And through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 29, verses 11 through 19. The vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you, you hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, Who sees us? Who knows us? You turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker? He did not make me or the thing form say of him who formed it. He has no understanding. It is not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest. In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. Psalm 14 will be read responsibly. The fool has said in the heart, there is no God, and all are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. Lord, 
Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion when the Lord restores the fortunes of his people. Jacob will rejoice, and Israel will be glad. The second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 to 33. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and is himself its savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter of the first 13 verses. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders, and when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But if you say if a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever would you have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us now turn to hymn 464. The first two verses of that hymn.
Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. On the top of your bulletin, or on the front cover of your bulletin, it says you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. It seems to me that this particular portion of the text, the gospel lesson for today, is particularly important for us to grasp because if we don't understand where we come from and what the basis of our worldview is, then we're going to really suffer in the sense that we will not be clear about our lives and where we're going and what God is doing in our lives and the lives of others. You see, there are really two avenues that are spelled out in this text. The first one is to love the commandments. You leave the commandment of God. And most people leave the commandment of God, Jesus is saying, and they hold on to the tradition. You remember what the situation was? Jesus had been there for preaching at uh, the city, and uh, as he was preaching, there was a group of investigators from the Pharisees who came to, to see whether he was being the kind of person that they thought or that, he, that they thought Jesus claimed to be. And so they uh, asked some questions, and they started off by saying in, in an accusatory way, why don't your uh, disciples do the same thing that we do? We, uh, what do we do? We actually are there in a way that uh, will demonstrate to them that we are clean, and the world will see that we are pure and not defiled, but you, by not following the traditions, are in essence doing the opposite and making it so easy for people to disbelieve. But let me back up for just a second. If you read certain books, on, especially on missionaries, biographies or other books on missionaries, you will recognize that in most cases there are two different ways that are spelled out. And we have to make a choice. And the first way has been denominated by many ministers and missionaries and theologians as the way of man. The way of man. Or to put it in another way, many of us believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior. But when it comes to Jesus Christ being our Lord, we have much more difficulty. We'd rather be saved, which is understandable, and most of us need it. But we also should understand and recognize that in this particular situation, we can be Christians by focusing on the Savior and then at the same time following our earthly, worldly ways. And that's what Paul, and I'm sorry, Jesus is pointing to in this text. He is saying to the disciples and to others who are listening, look, it's important for you to believe in me, but it is really important for you to translate that belief into doing something that Jesus is calling you, that I am calling you to. And that's where so many of us get stuck. We believe, but then when somebody raises the question, does that belief translate in a different way of life? for you and for me? Do we actually translate our belief into something that is so meaty and so important that we don't want to let go of it and that we continue to want to go back to in order for us to understand what life means with Jesus and without Jesus? So the one way that people follow, and apparently Jesus is saying the Pharisees are following, one way is for us to pronounce our belief and faith, and at the same time, basically give up on living a life that is called for by our Lord and Savior. So you see, we have not only a Savior, but Jesus is telling us that we have a Lord who directs your life and my life, who's willing to lead us 
who's willing to challenge us, who's willing to give us grace in order to live our life the way he wants us to live our lives. And so we go on, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men and what basically happens, and we'll get into more of that next week, what basically happens, Jesus says, you know, that's really not what it's all about. What it's all about is the fact that I am willing to save you, yes, and you'll find out about that more. But what is important is to recognize that you also are called to follow. And when you're called to follow, there's a difference that in your lives, or there should be a difference in your life from the person that you were when you were not following our Lord. And then Jesus says, why do your disciples, they had a challenge, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but each with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy, you hypocrites, as it is written? Now what's interesting to me about this part of the text is that Jesus recognizes the eating of the defiled food, but then goes on to challenge them, as, I, as we mentioned before, to look at life really the way it is and look at your own life and see whether your life is in comportment with the, the gospel that Jesus represents. So well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. The people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. That's a challenge, isn't it? It's also an accusation. It's also an allegation for the way we live that we, you and I, should in some way or another actually follow Jesus, not just with our words, but with our actions, with our heart. We should leave, follow not only with the people who believe in a way that uh, may be different than you and I, believe, but we should actually try to remember that God is challenging you and me. And then Jesus goes on and says, let me give you an example. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God. You see, that's the issue. We reject the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And they must have had a Inquisitive, inquisitive look in their faces because at that point Jesus says, and he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. Is that interesting? Moses' law is not denied by Jesus but is lifted to a new point of sharpness so that it will penetrate us and help us to recognize where it is that we fall short or where it is that we follow traditions of men rather than the, the gospel commandments. And so he goes on to say, they reject, for Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. That's a pretty stout, you know, uh, boy, if that's if that Jesus is going to hold me to that standard, my parents would probably get out of their grave and be willing to tell the world uh, that Hensian, the kleine Junge, the kleine Bub, the is nicht so schön and nicht so gut. But what I said, you didn't need to hear anyway, so I won't translate it. So, what is Jesus is saying? Jesus is saying that. God, through Moses, called us, all of us, to honor our father and mother. That's the issue. And if you don't do it, we're going to be potentially suffering death because of it. And then he goes on. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. Whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban. What is he saying? What he's saying is that the, the Pharisees had a duty, as all of us, to honor our father and mother. But you know, do we really have to do that? Do we really have to 
honor them and provide for them, which was part of honoring them in the fourth uh, uh, commandment. Do we really have to do that? They said to them, says, look, we're smart. We know how the system works. We don't have to worry about the fact that we, you and I may not completely follow the commandments. It's going to be okay. In fact, the money that we were going to spend on our parents and their support, we're going to give it to the Pharisees and to the temple, and then we don't have to worry about the fact that we might just be interpreting this passage so that we get off the hook and don't have to worry about God's commandment. And that's what they did. A son or a daughter or both could go to their parents and say, sorry, we don't have any money. The money that was set aside for you was actually going to have to be given in the temple. And they couldn't do anything about it. The parents couldn't. And so they short sheeted their obligations. And then we go on. And then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition. What traditions do we have which make the, our traditions void? What do we do that makes our traditions more important than following Jesus? I don't know. I do know that God is calling everyone here to be a disciple who not only expresses their faith and their use their faith and, and give lip service, but we are to be disciples which have a, have, which we, for which we have a Lord who is willing to lead us out of all temptation into a better life with him. Amen. We'll now sing the other two verses. Turn with me, if you would, to page 65, and let us stand and confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. On page 65. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in the peace Spirit, received by the whole of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Spirit, by our own reason and strength, we cannot believe in Jesus Christ our Lord or come to him. But you have called us by the gospel and enlightened us with your gifts. Sanctify and keep us in true faith so that we may daily listen for your promise and that the last day we may be raised up and given eternal life with all who believe in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, as the summer begins to wind down, we will move again into the cycle of harvest and return to school. Remind us of your presence in all our transitions and help us to treasure each and every moment. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of creation, look with kindness on your creation. Restore wholeness to rivers and seas, deserts and forests, farmland and wilderness. Help us to see your good works so the hearts of all living things may sing their thanks and praise for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy. Healing Lord, you are the ever-present help in time of trouble. We give thanks for your servants who have recently returned home from the hospital or are now in rehab units and are recovering. Let your good gifts of health and strength now present in them continue and increase so they may fully re be fully restored by your saving grace. We uplift to you and name in our hearts all those you have blessed with your healing presence. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>